Ready? Yeah. I was born ready. Born ready. He's super ready. <laughs> Hi right, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of On Point Physique Television. I'm Nigel Batten, this is James Wood, Jimmy Bareface, um, PT for 18 years, no, in the fitness industry you've been in for 18 years. Yeah, now. fitness industry 18 years and PT for over 10, 12, something like that. So you've been around for a, for a fair while, so those that are just qualifying. Good luck. Yeah, and you've actually been in the fitness industry since they were born. Yeah, worryingly. You're old, man. I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. So, um, for those who um, don't, uh, don't know James, James is actually a PT at uh, Evolution Health and Fitness at Allsford. You go around and you do mobile PT as well? Yeah, I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he's actually got a second business, which he is uh, one of the directors for of uh, beard, beard products, actually. It's uh, just as well he's got a beard for... Hmm being a director of that company. A, a very fine beard, shall a we very say. Fine a very beard. fine beard. Yeah, thanks. Um, and that company is Are You Bareface? Oh, that's right, isn't it? That's correct. That uh, is correct. Yes. How long has that been running for now? Three years. Yeah, Three. it's a labour of love. Yeah, it's a labour of love, but you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. So you are a very, very busy man. A very busy man. A very busy yes, man. Yes, time is, time is now, yeah, minimal. One of the reasons I've got James on the uh, web series is I've seen face to face, I've seen it as he's doing it, all his PT of all his clients, and this guy is phenomenal with every single one. Oh, thanks so much. Even, even those that don't listen to you. Even those that don't listen. <laughs> and there's a lot that don't listen. There's a lot that don't listen. There's a lot. Um, so, but if you can give us a little bit of a story of, or background as to uh, how you actually got into the fitness industry in the, in the first place. Yeah, so I think when I, was, when I was heading through college, I wanted to be a P teacher. Um, and pretty much within a, a year of college decided that I did not ever want to be a PE teacher because that is hard goddamn work. Um, so fitness has always been a passion and, um, and I thought I would explore that route um, and, and look into that. So yeah, I, I thought that was a good, you know, good thing to look into. Oh, happy day. So yeah. from college, did you do your, your PT qualification after leaving college or did you do that? No, so during... I did. I did um, I did my college. I did my human biology, uh, yeah. sports science college. I went to university. Uh, I did my sports science degree with honours. Um, and then I came out. I did my um, personal training certificate after that. Um, and then numerous certificates. Just, yeah. Loads of accreditation yeah. certificates yeah. since then. Yeah, few days. lots, lots and lots, mm. like jelly tops. Yes, yes, quite. Yes. Um, so, along the sort of eighteen years, so did you start off? You go into um, gym, gym work. I know you were yeah, a gym so, manager at one point. Yeah, so I went straight into gym. I got headhunted from uni. Um, strangely, to come back to a local gym um, and be the assistant manager because I had a position open. And I'd done bits and bobs work, I'd sort of been in and, and done some shifts and helped. Um, so that was really nice. So I went straight from uni into work. That's, uh, that's which, always good. Yeah, which was really cool. Um, and worked with a few really interesting people there. Um, started to also do sideline work for a, a company called Intelligent Fitness. Um, so we would we, we delivered workshops to trainers okay. around the country. Uh, numerous different workshops, numerous different topics for quite a few years. Um, and then I went. I took over management of the gym, um, which I had a fantastic, pretty much this gym here. Yeah, yeah pretty much yeah, this one here. Uh, and I had a fantastic seven years. Um, then redundancy loomed, and so almost immediately I um, I cracked on and started my own business. So I finished my last shift of management at five o'clock on a, I think it was a Wednesday. I walked off the site, took a big deep breath in, walked straight back in, had my first client. And uh, I haven't stopped since. That's uh, that's not bad. So was it the the redundancy that sort of forced the issue to? Because you went self-employed pretty much straight yeah. out of yeah straight out after gym management. Yeah. Um, so that coming along, that was what sort of like forced your hand. Yeah, to I'd been I'd been thinking about it for quite a long time. Yeah. Probably I don't know, maybe a year, two years, and it was always and I and I was doing some personal training whilst managing, and it was always a case of. Oh, do I go for it? Do I jump? Don't I? You know, I've got a safe wage. I know my hours. Is there going to be enough business? And then the decision was taken out of my hands. And actually, it was the best thing that could have happened um, for me at the time. Yeah, so. 
That's good. And I so say, I'll mention it on camera loads of times, but say that one of the reasons that I set up this series was to, to help those guys um, get in their qualifications and jump, you know, they're, they're going to make that decision. Do I go self-employed? Do I, do I go into sort of fitness instructing and build my knowledge first? Mm -hmm. And there, there's a massive arguments with sort of both sides. Um, but I so say, you obviously have that, that hand forced to you after being in the industry for yeah, I was. I mean, I was years first. Yeah, I was on the shop floor in the gym industry for yeah eight odd years. So you know, from you literally down to cleaning the machines, you know, right through to managing. All the dirty jobs. Yeah. So it? and you've got to, you've got to do that. In my mind, you've got to do that. Yeah. Start from the bottom and work your way up. So you know the industry inside out. Yeah. So absolutely, definitely spend the time. Yep. Learning. Learn your trade. And, and I say. I was in a very similar situation to you. My hand got forced. I went self-employed route straight away um, from a from a change of job as well. Um, sometimes that hand gets forced, and you have to make that jump. But I think the ideal situation for a, a lot of people is if you can get a foot in the door in a gym in a, in part of the industry, spend that time learning. Um, I think a lot of people sort of finish their personal training qualification and think right. I know how to train someone, that's it, I'm good to go, and I can do everything. But it's, uh, yeah, experience is a huge thing, and you know you can't buy experience, so if you, if you spend time working on the shop floor, you will work with you know, all sorts of different people, different ages, abilities, injuries, um, medical conditions, um, goals, um, you know, all the tiny nuances that if you, if you don't spend time learning and building that experience, you know, it's something that you, you don't get. And you and you never really get yeah. So to jump straight in head first PT, in, um, I think you, you know you can show really quickly where you're lacking the knowledge. Yeah, especially those developing those business skills. That's yep. something you'll definitely develop. Um, you'll learn how to talk to people, how to how to effectively sell yourself as well. Um, yeah, which I think is like it's one of the massive massive things sort of missing. So if you're, you're walking up to someone in the gym and saying fancy PT, fancy PT, fancy PT, a lot of them are just going to Say no. Yeah, um, I think for me certainly, in, in also in terms of evolving your business, I think a good way to start is if you if you are working in a gym on a shop floor, if you look to take on and deliver a fitness class, you know, a weekly or twice weekly fitness class, build up a good client base, um, and that in itself is quite a nice way to introduce yourself and your personality and your training style to people, numerous people. Yeah. Um, you know, and that typically will lend itself well for you making contact and actually people start asking you oh you know do you do PT and can I yeah. you know can you spend an hour with me absolutely yeah. I think um, for the people that have struggled talking uh, in large groups it's a massive massive way of, uh, of building your confidence talking to uh, to complete strangers in large quantities and, and effectively yeah selling yourself we do in the classes so yeah. build your confidence up develop those uh, those communication skills the massive ones because um, it's constantly met like it's a message that constantly comes across through the industry people buy into people yeah and they really do um, so I, I think they're the skills absolutely and I think especially I, I've seen over the past probably two years um, with the with the rise in social media and Instagram etc etc with some with some of the newly qualified PTs or gym staff coming through I think because Everybody nowadays is used to um, communicating behind a screen to a screen yeah. to people. You know, they they struggle. So a lot of them are struggling with the face to face thing. Yeah. And so quite often I hear from you know some of the more mature members and even some of the younger ones that oh such and such is is really quiet. They don't talk. And and if you are that way, you very quickly alienate yourself. Yeah. You know? So absolutely. it's important to to learn those communication skills face to face. Yeah. I, I think you're, I say with this gym in particular I think you're quite lucky because you with the there's not that many members in this gym so I'll just let you know that first but James is the only PT in the gym um, but with the number of members we got I mean having two would would make it not a place for a personal trainer to come essentially yeah. um, and that's another thing you sort of need to bear in mind when you're picking the gym that you're going to go and work in for the first time and um, some gyms out there are going to flood those floors with up to 10 personal trainers um, have a look at the number of members in that gym um, and really think about am I going to be able to uh, to get the clients through the door with nine other PTs um, operating around me um, I say yourself only one here so you've got no one to compete with but 
again, I think we do quite well here. Previous managers before me have always said it's just one PT as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So bear that in mind when you're going out, starting fresh, research the gym that you go into. Um, I think that's something that's massively important. Yeah, it is. It's huge. But you know, and I've and I've trained in numerous gyms, and I've when I when we've delivered these fitness courses, we have worked in numerous gyms <coughs> with large groups of PTs, and, and I think that you know one of the common trends that I seem to have picked up on over the years is that um, some of the bigger gyms that have you know huge membership bases but like you say flood the floor with PTs you know all of a sudden your skills potentially are diluted um, then you've got to think about can is there enough sustainable business for me you know um, and the turnover of PTs in large gyms can be pretty quick um, and what makes you stand out? What makes you different? Why are people going to come to you as opposed to go to the next person or the next person? Yeah. So yeah, you have to you know you have to carve out a carve out a niche for yourself. As yeah, well. I think. Um, so seeing a lot of your clients come through the door, you've got actually quite a wide range yeah. of uh, of client base. So you, you've got the older generation. You've got set. Uh, I mean, there's there's young lads and girls come up to you and ask you for advice as well. Yeah. So I mean. Your demographic is actually really wide. Yeah, it's huge. Right. From, from sort of 16, 16, 15, 16 year old rugby kids, um, some kids that are um, sort of younger than that but disaffected, don't communicate very well within school, um, don't participate well, right through to, um, you know, sort of single mums, um, parents, husbands, wives, um, and then right through to uh, a couple that I see in their home that are just about 90. Yeah. You know, so a whole lot, all with different goals and different needs, you know, and you have to just have a different head for every single one of them and understand them and understand their goals and their needs and, you know, and, and be really sort of fluid in terms of how you can train those people and, and, and listen, you need to listen, listening is the key. Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit a really big point there, which I was, I was hoping would come across is that different people, you're going to have to speak to them slightly different ways. Yeah. Um, particularly older generation, call them your blood or let's say showing them, your, showing them your latest Instagram post isn't going to wash with someone who's in their 60s because no, they don't get it. They don't get it. Um, no, 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 not interested. No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we, we talked about like the sort of things you need to think about and bear in mind along the way. Are there any sort of like um, things that have popped up you're like, yeah, you really shouldn't be doing that as a new PT? But, I mean, not necessarily that you've done yourself, but you've also seen along the way that, that people are doing. Uh, I th yeah, sometimes I think, it's, I think it's the speed at which people jump into the industry, do a short qualification, really short qualification, having had no real experience in the industry other than training themselves, um, and then delivering information that essentially is you know, the fabled bro science that we all talk about. You know, I tried this and it worked, or oh, someone told me this and, and it worked, so I'm gonna try it with my client. You know, you've always gotta make sure that the information you're given is, is correct and you can, um, you know, you can back up with science. You've gotta make sure that the training you are delivering is safe and effective. And I think often people forget the safe bit. Um, and, you know, you need to be able to look at fads, current fitness fads or current trends and dissect them and and use your own brain to think hang on you know what is this going to do is this a safe thing to, to get my clients to be doing and is it is it is it going to get their you know achieve their goals does my 90 year old you know want to be doing some sort of crazy dieting and, and have a, a six pack <laughs> probably not not these told me probably not, not these told me. <laughs> so yeah it's um it's taking time and taking time and spending time learning, learning the industry, get the knowledge, background read all the time, keep learning all the time and, and deliver information that is that works and is safe. And sometimes it's not always the jazziest, glitziest stuff. Um, yeah. But basics works. And basics. Basics have been around basics for years work. and years and yeah. that's why they've stayed is because they work. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't have to be fun. It can be <laughs> yeah. fun, you know, and that's how you deliver it, but you can still be safe without you know, without an crazy random exercise. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, bareface. We'll uh, we'll touch on that. Touch on it. We'll touch on the bare. The bare it's a good beer. It's, oh, it's like a chinchilla. <laughs> um, 
so that's been going, so three, year, three years, I think? Yeah, three, three years, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So how did Bareface come about? Because obviously you've got a PT business that's working, and yep. bringing the money and paying the bills. Mm. Um, so obviously you, you're training, you're PTing. Yeah. Um, what was the thought process or what? how did what Bareface happened? come about? How did you suddenly decide, you, okay, there's a second job, I'm going to do a second job? Yeah. Stupidity. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, generally, what happened was, and this is this is the genuine story. So we were. This is so. This is going back three years ago. Uh, my brother and I were going to enter a Spartan race, um, which are great, by the way, good obstacle course races. Um, and we thought, well, I know we'll we'll go the whole hog. We'll we'll grow the beard thing. We'll do the whole Spartan esque type thing and, and make it a bit, you know, do it for charity. Make it a bit of an adventure. Yeah. Anyway, we started growing beards and. Um, and they were dry and itchy, and they weren't they, didn't, they weren't great to be honest. So then I think uh, my girlfriend started looking at whether she could find anything to make them less scratchy and horrible. And she couldn't find much. There was certainly was I think I don't know most of it was from America. There's only a couple of companies in America doing it at the time. Uh, I think there's maybe one other company here, but sat around a, a table. I think maybe over a coffee or a beer or a, I can't remember what it was. I think someone said, "Why don't we? We could we could do this. We can make this stuff ourselves." And it went, someone went yes, another person went yes, and then before you know it, well, that's, that was it. We, I think we'd, we'd, we went to London Tattoo Convention, which you know we love, we love the tattoo scene, um, with some testers. People loved it, and on the train back we made, um, we, we bought the website the name, we made the Instagram, we did a Facebook, and we pitched up home and that was it, that was the start. And, and you know, it, it was going to be a hobby, it was going to be a bit of fun, it was, it was going to you know, take us travelling around to the tattoo conventions. Uh, and then it just went mental. Wow. Yeah, so now I don't sleep. <laughs> no, you don't sleep. Ever. <laughs> Lots of co that's the coffee in the yeah, morning getting yeah. you through the day. Yeah, I'm actually only 17, but I just look about 80. <laughs> <laughs> Born into the PT business. It's straight in there, yeah. straight in there. Straight in there. Awesome, brilliant. Um, so, yeah, we covered a sort of lessons along the way. Um, obviously, you mentioned that you're training as well. Yeah. Um, fitting and training around your clients. Um, I've seen how some people do this. Um, literally in between clients. Um, some people do it at the start of the day, some people do it at the end of the day. Um, I know where you fit yours in because I, I see you each day, but um, if you can just sort of explain to the guys how you sort of like manage your, your own personal training for yourself and around your clients. And, uh, yeah, mine's, my training always is, is sort of varied over the years. So I've done different things. I've done obstacle course racing, I've, I've lifted, I've done a bit of martial arts here and there. So I've always done different things. I've played a bit of sport. Um, had numerous injuries, so I've always worked around those things and then having to work around an ever increasing workload. So I used to I used to be pretty good. I could I could sort of fit my training in, in the early evenings, six, seven o'clock, then maybe a little bit of work afterwards. Then it started to get a bit busier and because I want to be as time efficient as possible, I'd all, I'd, I'd tend to run sessions almost back to back, leaving me not much time in between. Um, so training just had to get earlier and earlier and so I think I think it, it probably got pretty bad uh, when I had quite a long commute to get to work and and I was I was probably averaging about and I'm not recommending this this is exactly what not to do um, <laughs> I was probably averaging about four hours sleep a night wow. uh, and training super early so it, you know that got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore and I had to move um, so you know that's how important for me keeping my training was going. I, I thought, right, let's change this. So I had to move. So now I still do it super early. So Monday mornings up at half four, uh, train around five quarter past five, and then the rest of the week I might train at half five, six o'clock. So up early. And now I probably average about six, six and six hours a night sleep, yeah, so which you, is much you're better. You're getting that six minimum yeah. anyway, at least. So yeah, so it's better. Yeah, it's better. four's not long, man. It's so it's early. Yeah. So it's early. But I do know quite a few people in the industry, and they, they got busier and busier and busier, and their training just stopped um, because they were too busy chasing dollar all day every day and um, not looking after their own health. Yeah, and their fitness went downhill rapidly. You know, and there they are delivering you know fitness lessons and, and sessions to people whilst their fitness was just rapidly going downhill. So that again is uh, you know each to their own, but. Not a great idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so obviously you've gone. You're self-employed. Mm -hmm. What were the sort of things that you found yourself having to really sort of think about? Um, obviously, how to get your clients. Yeah. Um, and what sort of other things sort of came into the process of you starting out self-employed? 
what sort of things did you have to take into consideration when uh, when starting out really? Yeah, so for me it's it's quite an interesting one because I because I had already managed the gym um, for quite a period of time. I had quite a good and I'd run a, a circuits class for quite a few years, so I already had um, a good reputation amongst members. So when I I started doing some PT and when I was still managing, I had about two or three clients. Then when I went totally self-employed, um, I advertised in some local press. This was a time well before Instagram, probably before Facebook, maybe before the internet, probably before the car, <laughs> I think, or the wheel. Yeah. Um, I heard a rumour that one of your first clients was actually Chuck Norris. It could have been Chuck <laughs> Norris. <laughs> what? Um, no, so I advertised in some local media, uh, some local publications, um, small ads, half-page ads, just letting people know who I was, where I was, what I did, and yeah. I only advertised for the first six months of my business, and within six months I was busy enough that I, I just stopped advertising, and I haven't advertised now for, well, the rest, seven and a half years, seven and a half, eight years, yeah, and I, and I, you know, I don't, I haven't Instagrammed, and I haven't, I don't have a website, so luckily, Proper you know, old school. Yeah, it is old school. I mean, reputation my, Yeah, it is. You know, it's word of mouth reputation, and um, and I've always, you know, and I've always kept a, f a fairly steady client base, um, and quite uniquely, I'm a PT that that has had some clients for a really long time. I think my longest client I've had now, and still see regularly, is 13 years. That's a long time. That's it is. Yeah, I think it's it's 13 years and then after that it's I think 11 years and 7 and you know so most of my clients are you know sort of long term yeah, clients really and long -term then I do have clients. Yeah, yeah I do have a turnaround of you know a few clients here and there short term but and that's important I think a lot of PTs that come through the industry now end up sort of it's a short game to so end up with maybe if they're lucky a client for you know it might be a couple of sessions or 6 weeks or 6 months and then they tend to you know those clients drift away, and it's trying to work out why they're drifting away. What is yeah. it you're, you know, what is it they're not getting that is making them leave? Okay. okay. So yeah. and I think another thing that you touched on the uh, the Instagram um, thing is that I find a lot of the new PTs is trying to get out there, make a name for themselves via Instagram, sort of globally, mm. and they're not looking after the small environment that they're involved in. Absolutely, they're, they're focusing their net far too wide and and not. Not catching the fish in their own little area. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that's that's definitely something that people need to uh, take into account when they're starting out. Start small. Start, Start small. small. Be good at what you do. Dominate the area you're in locally. You know, get a good client base, and then gradually just start to widen that circle until you get to a point where you're like, okay, that's enough for me now. Or if you want, just take over the planet. Get a bigger net. Get a bigger net. We need a bigger boat. It's gonna need a big boat. Need a bigger boat. And if you're old enough to remember that quote, big fish. You're about our age. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, personal development through uh, through your time in in your career. Obviously, you you got your PT qualification and your degree. Your degree and experience you got through your gym management. Yeah. And headed into the world of PT. I mean, what sorts of sources of information have you used to sort of like even further develop that knowledge? Um, so always looking at courses, um, always reading books, reading <coughs> literature. Um, the the guy I used to work with um, when we used to do deliver the workshops. He's a full time researcher, so we spend a lot of time chatting, um, chewing over sort of the most up to date research, which is is always quite interesting and just discussing the industry as a whole really um, and, and how it's changed over the years um, so you know trying to keep my finger on the button on the pulse on the pulse we yeah like, we like on the pulse on the pulse on the pulse mm -hmm. so um, um, books wise books wise so this this is my it's come prepared I have come prepared and only, prepared. only because this, every time I talk to people I've seen you know talk to a lot of PTs that have been in the industry for a while um, and I always ask them, I say, oh, you know, have you heard of the such and such? And they're like, no, what is this you talk of? And it always shocks me. It always shocks me. It's, it's dead simple. It's dead simple. It's this. ACSM guidelines, textile testing and prescription. It's dead simple. It's, as an industry, we take our guidelines from, should be taking our guidelines from the American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM. 
Um, and this book is fantastic. It will talk you through how to exercise test, special populations with exercise testing, all the relevant park use, the, um, the weekly, daily requirements in terms of exercise intensity, type, time, duration, rest periods, the whole shebang. I mean, if you are, this, is, this goes back to talking about delivering safe and effective yeah. exercise. If you are delivering exercise that is based around the principles in here, you pretty much cannot do wrong. Yeah, absolutely nail it. Yeah. yeah. And, heaven forbid, if ever anything happened, if you injured somebody and they decided they were going to take you to a court of law and they were going to sue you um, for negligence, a, you're obviously going to have your um, insurance. B, you're obviously going to be qualified. And C, if you are given exercise based on these guidelines, pretty much you will have both legs to stand on. If you say, oh, well, well he got injured, he was, you know, he was doing a, an upside down headstand on a fit ball because Barry told me it was really good for his neck muscles for rugby. <laughs> Then you, you literally you go in downtown. You're in trouble. Yeah, bad. And again, it bad comes, trouble. comes back to the thing of thinking about with your PT clients. Be safe. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, and I think you know a lot of it. A lot of it we talk about. Um, you know, egos nowadays. It's quite. I say nowadays. It's always. It's always been industries. It's one of those industries where sadly. You can get a lot of ego, um, and whether it be with your clients that want to lift more than they can lift, or they want to run further than they can run, whatever it might be, or whether it's within a PT versus another PT, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm better than this guy, I can do more fancy things, I can lift more. You know, it's, it's, don't worry about ego, just deliver good exercise that your clients enjoy, listen to them, understand them. More often than not, if a client comes in, Generally speaking, a lot of them will feel pretty crappy. They've probably got a ton on their plate. Work will be crap. Home life might be difficult. They're probably tired. They're irritable. They ate crap at the weekend. They hate life. And that's how they walk in. And if they can walk out at the end of your session and they are happy as a pig in muck, then they will keep coming back and keep coming back. So a lot of it is, is you, know, it's, you know, the exercise is just one tiny portion of what you guys need to be thinking about. You need to be a... You need to be like a coach, a counsellor, a friend, a confidant. So many things, yeah. The whole and, lot. And the thing is, um, it, developing those relationships with your clients as well is massively important. Yeah. Um, uh, some people, you hit it off straight away. Um, and, they're, and they're fantastic. They're the ones that sort of stick around. Um, those, those clients, you know, relationships have to be worked out. I, yeah. mean, I think every PT out there has had that client where it's, it's not been alright, and then that one thing happens in the in the training, whether it be that they suddenly see they've lost a lot more weight than they thought they had, they come back, and then they start. You start developing that sort of that trust relationship. Yeah. Um, it's another thing is is earning that trust with your clients, keeping it, and uh, keeping it is the big thing. Is the moment you try and rip your clients off or or lie to them about something that's happening, be open, honest with your clients because they'll respect that. It's, if you've got to move an appointment with, yeah. with one of your clients because you've double booked, tell them, okay, look, I'm sorry, double booked. Um, don't make up enough excuse because they tend to come out and they come out really off. If you're like me, you're crap at lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrendous. Yeah, just be straight up. Yeah, just yeah. be straight up. Um, I think I'm one of those guys, I think I've been caught out and I, I tried it when I was younger. I was tried to. Tried, uh, Tried throwing it the uh, other direction to make it look as if it wasn't me, but um, every time, the worst poker face in the world. So if you ever want to take money off me, play poker, um, and <laughs> it's yours. I might as well just hand it to you. So um, yeah, be upfront, be honest with your clients, develop that relationship, develop that trust, and bloody keep it because those people that you earn it with are, are going to stick around. Yeah. If I would, if I were coming into the industry now, I would be. Brave. <laughs> um, it's, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard time now. It's a really hard time. I think one of the worst things is, is I think the industry is now awash with um, people that, because they go to gyms and they have trained themselves, they naturally assume 
oh, I'm going to PT, this is going to be, I, I like exercise, I can tell people how to exercise, and that's going to be a really great job. Whereas the reality of it is you will struggle to fit your own training in, you know, your own training has to take a bit of a back seat, um, which some people, you know, find difficult. You will have almost no social time, because typically speaking, everyone wants to train really early before work, you might get a couple of drifters in a couple of odd crappy slots in the middle of the day, and then everyone wants to train after work. Yeah, and they want to the busiest, busiest well. time. Busiest they don't want to train time. weekends. You know, someone you might have one or two clients, and they just want to train ten o'clock on a Saturday morning, and then the other wants to train at one o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And yeah. someone might want to train early on a Sunday, so you have very little time. Um, yeah, I think if you want, if you join the fitness industry to have a nine to five Monday to Friday job, you. You joined the wrong one. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it is every hour. It is hard, yeah. and I would say it's. I would say yeah. So if you've joined the fitness industry to have a nine to five, don't do it. If you've joined the fitness industry to make a ton of money, don't do <laughs> it. Every you know, everyone talks about everyone talks about the hourly rate of personal trainers, and it and it depends where you're from and where you train, and you know you hear some absorbent exorbitant rates of of PT. And, um, However, bear in mind, if you're self-employed, there's no pension contribution, there's no sick pay, so you, there's no, you don't do sick days, there's no sick days. There's no holiday pay, so all of a sudden a week somewhere costs you not only the holiday, it costs you a loss of earnings. You know, you've got to find your big tax bills when you get hit with your big tax bills. It's a, it is a nightmare. If you're going to be in the industry, be in the industry because you are passionate about fitness and Absolutely. you are passionate about helping people and you would be happy to do it for free if you didn't have your bills to pay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the uh, the biggest thing is that passion, and that shows on the on the gym floor. If, yeah. if if you're not passionate about what you're doing and about helping that client, you playing flappy birds on your phone while they're lifting, it shows to not only your client but it shows to everyone in the gym. Yeah, um, everyone can see it. You're not going to get any clients if you're sitting teetering around on your phone. Um, and if you're using your phone as a timer, I'd say it's probably not the best thing to be using as a timer. Get yourself a stopwatch because the first thing everyone looking around the gym is going to assume your is that you're playing on your phone. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, don't use your phone as a timer. Okay. Get, I mean, you gym bosses gym boss are really gym good. Boss, yeah, yeah, interval timers, they're really yeah. good. You can get them cheap online, all sorts of places. You can just set the interval level, um, you know, the time, so the time, work time and rest period, really good. Use a stopwatch. Yeah. get a stopwatch going, whatever, but I think to, to be on a mobile device, um, unless it's a tablet whereby you're, you know, you're recording data onto a tablet, I think a tablet's a little bit different. Uh, I think if you're on your phone, I think it, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it's, it's doesn't not a great, great advert. Yeah. It does not look great. It's not a great advert. No. So, um, cool, happy days. So what we'll do, um, we will finish up there. Um, James, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thanks for doing this. Um, What's the matter? CIA the matter? got you pushing too yeah. many pencils? Damn, they big. I've got to start training more. <laughs> if you remember that line in that film, <laughs> then you're as old as me as well. <laughs> I think you're so old. Oh my god. <laughs> also, in fact, I'm not going to finish up there. I watched a talk with um, Phil Lerny back at LIW and he came across with a bucket load of film quotes in his talk. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I was sat there in the audience, right? And he's like, does anyone know this quote? And I'm like, that. And I look around, right? No one else in the whole audience got the quote. So I'm like, shit, I'm not. He even looked at me, he was like, shaking his head and laughing because I was the oldest one there. And the old boy. Everyone else, like 18, 19, sort of like really early 20s. And I'm just, I'm just sat there laughing. Well, if you recognise those quotes, <laughs> stick it in the comments below. Yeah, stick it in the comments below because uh, it'll be interesting to see if, uh, or how many of you actually know. So, um, yeah, <laughs> damn we all. <laughs> nice. nice. So we will wrap it up there. Thanks a lot for watching On Point Physique Television. Uh, this is James Wood. I'm Nigel Batten. Thanks for watching and keeping yourselves and your clients on point. Take care. Stay awesome. Adios, muchachos. Bye.